Welcome to the channel. This is Ars Poetic and I appreciate you checking out my video preview of the Scuf and Vision controllers. These controllers have got a gang of features and reinforce some of the deeper thoughts I've had around ergonomics and controller improvements. I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about why I'm excited for this controller and what I hope to see in the future from Scuf and other controller manufacturers. At the time of this video, the Envision Pro controller continues to be sold out, while the standard version seems to be readily available. I'm definitely getting my hands on the Pro version as soon as I can. After I've spent some time with it, I'll be making a full video review of the controller, just like the one I made for the Scuf Reflex PS5 controller. If you've already seen that video, I appreciate you taking the time to watch it. In the scheme of things, I'm still just getting started with YouTube, and that has been my best performing video to date by far thanks to you. If you've seen the preview video I did for the Scuf Reflex, in which I also dove into my perspective as a left-handed gamer, then you already know that I was a major fan of the Scuf Vantage controller. I honestly thought the sax buttons were a one and done deal, so I'm stoked to see them back in effect on the Scuf Envision, which appears to take a lot of great design cues from the Reflex and its Xbox counterpart, the Instinct. After all, you can take the sax buttons off if you don't want them, so everybody wins. Before I go further, I have to clarify that at this time the Scuf Envision is only supported on Windows 10 and 11 PCs. What the fuck is this piece of shit? No compatibility with consoles, mobile devices, or Macs, even when plugging directly in via USB. I could potentially see support being added through driver updates, but as far as I've seen, there's no official word on this. If this changes, I'll be sure to cover it. I'm not too sour about the lack of compatibility here because I still love using my Reflex, and to be honest, I wouldn't mind having another gamepad that is dedicated to wireless PC gaming. While the Reflex can pair with the PC wirelessly, it has to be resynced with the PS5 every time you do so. I prefer to avoid the hassle by just using a USB cable when I want a game on PC. With my couch set up though, this means that I always have a 10 foot USB cable running across the room, which isn't great. Still, I long for the day in which we can have one controller to rule them all. Let's get into the feature set here by starting with the two models available. The standard Scuf Envision starts at $130, while the Pro version goes for $180. The core feature set is the same between the two, aside from three key differences. The differences come down to wireless connectivity, triggers, and grips. The Pro version is wireless through a USB dongle, whereas the standard can only connect via USB. The triggers are fully functional on both, though the Pro version has built-in adjustments for the triggers so you can turn them into instant mechanical triggers whenever you'd like. Lastly, the Pro features textured rubber grips instead of the standard smooth grips. Those three things are what make the $50 price difference. If you've got the budget for it, I'd recommend the Pro here simply for the wireless capability. The enhanced triggers and grips are a nice touch, but personally I think I may have settled for the standard version if it was wireless. So now let's get into the stars of the show here. All of those extra inputs. Both of the Envisions feature a total of 11 extra buttons. That's across four back paddles, two sax buttons, and five G keys. While the paddles and sax buttons can certainly be used for remapping standard controller buttons per usual, all 11 of these buttons can seemingly be remapped to separate inputs altogether, which really opens up the controllers if you want to throw hotkeys and shortcuts at it, or adapt it for certain games that have a lot of extra functions like Ready or Not or an MMO. I'll have to do some extensive testing to see how well it all works with the standard software as well as my preferred mapping software, which is Rewazd. One area of concern I do have is the placement of the back buttons. While the main controller layout is in line with the Reflex in the way that it adopts the PlayStation style symmetrical analog sticks, the back buttons seem to be more closely in line with the scuff instinct that was made for Xbox. I haven't tried the Instinct, as I don't have an Xbox, and I've been using my Reflex for PC up to this point, but I've been really satisfied with the paddles on the Reflex, so I'm hesitant to the change there. Still, I'm going to keep an open mind and do some thorough gameplay testing when I get my Envision Pro. Honestly, this controller seems like a huge win all around, despite three major flaws, which are surely by design, since after all, 
This is marketed as a PC only controller. I would have loved to see compatibility with consoles as well as DualSense trigger support, but I'm also certain that would have drove the price up, perhaps to even higher than that of the Reflex. The last thing I would have liked to see is macOS support in addition to compatibility for Android and iOS. While I don't have any Apple devices, and I seldom play games on my Android phone, I still feel for the small percentage of you out there that would have loved to use this controller for those purposes. So there it is, another big release from Scuf, which appears to bring some serious heat to the PC gaming controller realm. If you liked this preview, I hope you stick around to check out my full review down the road. I'm curious to know if any of you are planning on picking this one up. Let me know in the comments. I also recently have been playing Nintendo games with the Retro Fighters Blade and Battler GC, so I'll be sure to make a video about those in the near future. Once my full review for the Envision is out, I'll pin a comment in this video for you to check out. Aside from tech reviews and previews, you can expect the same for various games, as well as a slew of gameplay clips and highlights with some original music thrown in the mix. If any of that sounds appealing to you, I'd appreciate you subscribing. I got tons of plans for this channel and would love to hit 100 subscribers at some point. If you don't want to subscribe, that's cool, but I'd still appreciate a like or comment if you enjoyed the video. By the way, I also stream games on occasion. If you're interested in that sort of thing, or you just want to hang out virtually while I play games I enjoy, hit me up on Twitch or on my other YouTube channel, both linked in the description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for your time. This is Ars Poetic, dropping the mic.